All right, I don't even know who all out there is watching, but as you may or may not know, Dynamo Core 2.15 came out today. So I figured I have a few options here. I can record a video, edit it, post it tomorrow, or I can just go live here at lunchtime, get the showing and have it record it. That way it's already on the channel right after. So that's kind of what I went with, uh, the lazy method, I guess. Um, so as you may or may not know, Dynamo has versions that come out very often. If you go to dynamobuilds.com, you are able to see all the current versions. So this one is Dynamo 2.15, and it is right here. Dynamo Core Runtime 2.15.zip. Core Runtime means that you generally are able to have this in a sandbox mode on your desktop. So you don't normally have this in Revit until a Revit update comes out. Um, so that's kind of where this one comes into play. I force loaded it on Revit for this example, for this actual recording. So that's what I'm going to show today. Um, Saul on the Dynamo team is really, really good at having release notes as well. So there's always a blog post that comes around them and they have a whole TLDR, too long didn't read for it as well, which is always awesome. And yeah, if anyone is watching, just leave some comments too, and I'll try to get to them. I'll probably keep this at about 20, 30 minutes um, just to kind of look at the new release. Um, so yeah, he always has a release notes page or a blog post that breaks it down in a really simple way. Um, so we have things like Dynamo Core, where is it for these, all the stuff I already talked about, but you start to get into some of the new features, which are the most exciting parts of this as well. Um, so I'll just open it up. You can read this post. I linked it below, uh, but there are quite a few new features in here available to us. So what we'll do is we'll open up Dynamo and I'll just click new. So right off the bat, it looks pretty much the same as what you have in Revit 2023 right now, uh, but we do have a few other things in here. One of the biggest things is this run completed icon at the bottom of my window. So let me go ahead and tile my windows a bit. That way we can see the run completed. So we have a run completed dialog down here at the bottom. That's really important because that now starts to indicate if things are going on in your graph a bit odd as well. Um, so if you were to give some kind of input, something that doesn't make sense. So if we were to do plus, we're gonna do null. And we'll just try to add two null values together. And we'll see that that is a null. So we'll add a null value to a zero as well. And this one is actually fulfilling it. So that's what kind of is weird on that one. So it did show that run completed right away as well. If we switch to automatic, you will start to see um, it run and that run completed refreshes on the fly as well. So that's kind of interesting within this. The plus node actually concatenates strings together as well. So that's kind of an interesting uh, piece of information there. Um, so yeah, that's pretty interesting. If we were to do, I know I have a node that will freak out if I plug a string in. So we'll get an error on it. So with this, we do have that warning that we've always had in Dynamo, but we now see that we have a run completed with warnings in the bottom of the workspace as well. We also have this little icon here that's a warning. So if we click on this, it will take us to the nodes that have warnings. This is huge for whenever we are upgrading our Dynamo graphs. So that's something to keep in mind. It'll help us upgrade to that 23 release. I hope this gets into Revit 23 sooner than later because um, it's just so useful being able to navigate through these nodes. So if I were to copy this whole node over to the right and we zoom somewhere else, I can now click and navigate through those nodes freaking awesome. I really like this a lot and it's super useful. Uh, so I'm excited that they're adding this to it now. So another one here, let's see, is if we zoom out, this came out in Dynamo 2.14. These little overlays that indicate what's going on with nodes. If I were to freeze a node, we'll start to see a little freeze icon or disable its preview, we'll see that as well. So this came out in Dynamo 2.14, which is pretty awesome. Um, so they just added that as well, and I can't wait for this to be out. Um, so yeah, that's a few of the little things here. Navigating for the warnings is a big one. Another big one is if we navigate to extensions, 
there is a new extension in here called a graph node manager. So if you don't know, in Dynamo, there's this concept of packages, which are found in your library. Um, so a bunch of different packages that you can install that add additional functionality. But there are also other packages called extensions that actually tap into Dynamo's API to do really cool things as well. So if we were to go ahead and click on the graph node manager, we now have this whole UI over on the right that helps us start to review our Dynamo graphs for what's going on. So we have the ability to look at all these different values and see where they come from, see if there's an error on them. Right now these have warnings. So if I click on that, it'll actually zoom and kind of center my workspace around that node that I selected, which is really nice. A thing to note is it does currently support the zoom that you're on. So if I were to click on this, in this zoom level, that's how it will center my viewport. If I were to be really zoomed out and then I click, it's less useful. Um, so I tend to zoom in on a node of some sort and just click on that and it will center it for us. Uh, it'll also locate nodes just in the workspace if you click on them, which is really, really awesome. I think this is great for uh, upgrading graphs. I recently did a presentation at Built North America on Dynamo graphs and upgrading them and some of the pain points that come with that. And this wasn't even being shown yet. Um, Dynamo 2.14 barely came out and they just released this today. So this is going to change that presentation quite a bit. I'm giving a similar one at Autodesk University in September um, because upgrading graphs with this, it's just gonna be so nice. So we're gonna close this and we'll actually open a graph and take a look at how that process looks as well. So I'm just in a sample model, um, something that you've probably seen a ton of times uh, with an example that I know works. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and open a file. I'm going to open a keynote overriding graph. So it overwrites keynotes by their source um, and we'll see how this works. So I'm gonna click open and in Dynamo 2.15, you do have a few things that pop up at you here. So we have this open external file warning. So if it's not a trusted location in your XML file for Dynamo yet, you do have to tell it to trust that. This is some kind of security thing they added. Uh, it's actually within the blog post as well. Um, so it's kind of interesting. So it's kind of learning how to trust where your Dynamo graphs live. Um, Kind of interesting, I've never given it much thought when opening a DYN where it came from. This one's on OneDrive, for instance. Um, so yeah, we can actually tell it, let's trust that location in the future. We'll click yes. And it now stored that as a trusted location for me. So you can start to deploy those to your users as well, which is really cool for them to be able to trust certain locations, I guess, for deployments. That feature directly doesn't seem super usable right up front because it's just trusting locations. But that starts to tell me that they're thinking about things like pathing and things. So that's really cool. That's just one of those general things that you can start to think of given that development being added to Dynamo at this point, which is pretty cool. All right, another thing that pops up that's been in Dynamo for a little while are the workspace references. So if there is a newer version of a package, you can install it or keep your installed version. So this kind of manages those references for you. Uh, for now, I'm just going to ignore those, but you can always update Dynamo packages in this manner. And if you do keep installed version, it will actually just roll with what you have installed currently. Another important note, I'll link to it after this stream, but this Iron Python 2.7 is a new package from the Dynamo team to manage compatibility with Dynamo graphs that are getting upgraded to the new version. So you will have to have this package as well. So keep that in mind. Cool. So what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and click false for this and we'll hit run. And we'll see what happens. And this graph is actually really nice to where it just upgraded. So that's kind of a little less exciting because it didn't break, but it did run. So this one was a direct upgrade as well. If we go to our graph node manager, we will see a few things in here. So this little function right here tells me that one of those nodes, so I'll actually click on it to zoom in hopefully, and it's not working right now. 
that it's missing an input. So that's what that function is telling me at this point, which is kind of interesting. So that's really useful for troubleshooting your graphs. I'm actually using a function apply to either reset or apply overrides. And I'll include the link to this file below as well. Um, so that's an okay kind of error in my mind. Other ones that are available are is input. So if I look at this, I see right away that this reset overrides is marked as an input in my workspace. This is another one that is huge because we are able to troubleshoot these things as we upgrade our graphs. This one's really cool because everyone's starting to get into 23 or they're going to start getting into Revit 23 and this tool is going to be super valuable for that. So I think that's really great. We also have the ability to see if there is an output. This one's marked as output because this graph is made to work with Dynamo Player and you can do all sorts of filtering actions as well up here. There's another feature to export this list out to Excel if you want to, so that's kind of interesting. I don't see that being quite as useful, but it is there for you. And yeah, that's kind of some of the biggest changes there for this graph node manager, which is pretty cool. And just to finish out this thought, I'm going to show this graph in action. So let's just tile our windows. And right now it colored them already, so it kind of kind of gave away the punchline there, right? But in Revit, if we go through, seeing where a keynote came from is not really easy to do. But if you click on it, you will see that we have a key source parameter. That's accessible in the API, so we are able to use that as well. Um, so what we can do is we can actually switch this to false for reset. So the opposite, click run. And we have green as element keynotes and red are user keynotes. And I think green's also a material keynote in this case. I think I mapped that as the same. Yep. So you can map that as a different one if you like. And this does it for the whole project, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's kind of how that graph works. In regards to other things that are being added to this release, they have standard group creation, which is very similar to what's available in Monocle. So if we were to go to the ellipses button on any of our groups that we've already created, we have a group style with actions, inputs, outputs, and review. And if we select that, we get that color. This is really nice. And it makes me super excited to see this added to Dynamo as well, because that's one less thing that you have to depend on a package like Monocle for. Um, so if we go to visual settings, group styles, you can actually add your own styles as well in here. So if I were to do temp or temporary, we'll just leave it the purple. I now have that group style available to me as well, which is pretty cool. So that's a lot of what's added is some of these things to be able to share your graphs a little bit easier, I think. So that's really exciting to me. Uh, for other general notes here, they have speed improvements and things like that, of course. Uh, they've added a few different nodes. And the blog post does a really good job of summarizing it. But I always like to go to the release notes. So if you don't know, Dynamo is fully open source, so you can go view the source code and all that good stuff. But if you don't want to view all the source code, you can actually just control F and do release notes. And this is where all the gold really is, is the release notes. I think people think I'm a bit crazy because I spend time reading release notes for Dynamo, but they include so many detailed things in here. Uh, one of the biggest ones that I recently found was for dropdowns um, that are broken as of Dynamo 2.3. So you have to install a package to be able to use a new graph in an old version of Dynamo. Uh, there is a forum post, which I'll link below as well, but basically if you use dropdowns in a graph that's Dynamo 2.12 or above and their inputs, if you open that in like Dynamo 2.6 or older, so Revit 21 and older, uh, you will get errors that just aren't very clear, which kind of stinks. So uh, I, I only found that because of the release notes. So that's something to always keep in mind as well. Uh, these are way more thorough and they go into all sorts of detail in here as well. Uh, there's actually kind of a funny one in here that has always bugged me about Dynamo in Revit is whenever you install it, and I actually think I have it removed right now, 
you get the structural nodes in here under add-ons. So right when you install Dynamo for Revit or open Revit for the first time, you have add-ons, which is very confusing. So they've actually enabled it for those to get pushed up to this category. So if we go to still connections, these are now all up here in this category. So you'll start to see out of the box nodes going where they belong. So I could start to see things like probably mesh toolkit working its way up there as well, because I, I think that's one that should just come with Dynamo, for instance. Uh, funny enough, if you read the release notes close enough, you can actually force other packages to go up there as well. I do not recommend to do this, but I was curious. So I tried it out myself and pushed rhythm to the top instead of being an add-ons, which is kind of funny. Um, don't do that though. <laughs> you have to sign your code anyway. So that's always this whole process. That's kind of frustrating. Uh, other than that, this release looks really great. It's currently only in sandbox. So you do have to go to dynamo builds to download it. Like I mentioned. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things that I wanted to make a video on it anyway. So I thought I would just live stream it and just kind of show all that. And I believe there is a post on the forum for it as well. So if you're not on the dynamo forum, get on there and take a look at it. And he always breaks it down a bit more. So I think they're looking for feedback on this graph node manager. So once again, it is under extensions graph node manager. So be sure to go check that out as well and give them any feedback that you might have. Uh, another thing that I think is really interesting is Dynamo is in run manual now at this point. It used to be in run automatic. Back in like Revit 2018, Dynamo was on run automatic. They switched it back to run or it was on run manual by default. They switched it to run automatic like in Revit 20 and then they switched it back to run manual in this mode. So that's down here in the left corner of your screen. Um, if you want to change that, you can go to Dynamo Preferences and change the default run to automatic. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't even know if anyone's really hanging out, but leave a comment, whatever, and kind of let me know what else you'd like to see. As a reminder, if you are looking to learn Dynamo, you can go to learn.designtechunraveled.com. And I have a whole course for learning Dynamo from scratch for Dynamo for Revit. So go check that out as well. Let me know if you're interested in it. Uh, check out the course guide on the bottom. So I have all of the course outline on here as well for you to view. And this takes you from not knowing Dynamo, being a Revit user to knowing how to make graphs, kind of how I learned. Just to kind of piggyback on that a bit. When I first opened Dynamo in 2013, I didn't know how to use it and I closed it and I was like, I'm never going to learn how to use this. And then in AU 2014, I learned how to use it from Marcelo's classes. I share this story all the time because I feel it's easy to get frustrated with Dynamo and give up on it. But if you learn all these essential things, you start to, you can really start to build some really cool things. Uh, this graph for overriding keynotes is actually a throwback to one of the first graphs that I ever made in Dynamo uh, back when I first learned it. So user keynotes were a problem at the firm I was at. So we wanted a way to highlight them and it eventually turned into a plugin that we made. So it was kind of the blueprint for a lot of stuff. And it taught me a lot of the logic with Dynamo as well. So if you are interested, I'll leave a link to that below as well. It's learn.designtechunraveled.com and Design Tech Unraveled is actually what uh, 60 second Revit became as well, just in case you didn't know. But yeah, that's all I have. Um, it's been a bit of time at this point, 20 minutes or so. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments below any future videos you want to see or anything like that. I am working on a Python for Dynamo course as well. Uh, so, so stay tuned for that. And other than that, I appreciate anyone who showed up for this, anyone who's watching it after, just let me know what you think below and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.